Hey everyone, um, welcome to Mission Impact Series. Uh, this series is called Slaying Social Issues with Social Impact Businesses. And if you joined us last week, we talked about the power of uh, social impact businesses. And this week we're gonna be talking about how to start a social impact business. Um, Cause you can't have the power of it without actually starting a business, right? <laughs> so um, what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna discuss the challenges and triumphs of starting a social impact business because it's not all easy, um, including identifying social issues to address. That is important. And there are some pros and cons there. Um, developing a business model that aligns with your mission and uh, navigating the funding landscape because everything always comes back down to funding. Oh so you know, we started off our first series um, talking about funding, but funding is infused throughout everything that we talk about. And then we're also going to include sharing some inspirational stories of social entrepreneurs who have successfully launched social enterprise businesses or nonprofits, as well as discussing common challenges that arise during the startup phase. Okay. Um, and I'm sure that Ty can talk about some because she has a little son who is a social entrepreneur, <laughs> right? <laughs> That is what Alec is. He's a yeah. social entrepreneur at eight years old. Um, so, <laughs> and he's out here doing the thing. If you listen to my last, my last, um, our last one, I talked about if you just do good, all the accolades that you may have sought out or didn't seek out will come to you. And she can give you a story about that because Alec has done some amazing things. I'm a fan. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm a fan. Okay. And so this is your first time catching me um, and Ty. My name is Tracy V. Allen. Um, I'm the owner of Impactors Management Group, where I help social impact businesses to design, build, and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyles they desire while impacting their communities. Please make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel and go to Ty's channel and subscribe to that one too. It's called Capacity Central. Right. Go ahead. Tell and me. share it. Like share with your friends. Mm -hmm. like, share the sh like, share, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. My name is yeah. Ty I'm owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mainly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. And you know what? Startup. <laughs> so we're, we're, how do you how in the world do you get started in social impact? Right. Mm -hmm. This is again, you know, in the last week we talked about the fact that this is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. A lot bigger than uh, folks think usually when they get into it. They're like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm just going to start a nonprofit. I'm going to start a social enterprise. We're just going to run a business. But when you look at the core, the heart of it, the heart work, A-T-A-R-T, it's a whole lot bigger than you could ever imagine because you can change the world if you right. do it like you're supposed to do. At least make a dent. Mm -hmm. you, you can at least make a dent um, in the world. And it, it all starts with, you know, in my in my mind, it all starts with, research and understanding um what the problem is that you're trying to solve or is there a problem you know mm -hmm. some, sometimes things are not big enough and i tell people you know um if the pro if you have identified an issue first you want to know whether or not everybody else is already aware of this issue you mm -hmm. know um is this something that you know social injustice we know that's pretty everybody's talking about it you know everywhere so everybody's kind of familiar with that but if you, you have a, a rare disease or something, right? And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I'm gonna start a business and it's gonna it's gonna be in support of this disease. If if nobody knows about this disease, you're gonna have to raise awareness about the disease, right? You're gonna mm -hmm. have to advocate for support around the disease. So how much work do you have to put into this beforehand before you even go into thinking that you're gonna get funding for it, you know, that kind of thing that I think people miss in the early stages of getting ready to start these kind of businesses, because it may be something that's near and dear to you, but who else can identify with this? And if they don't, is it important enough that you have, that you need to raise awareness about it? Right. And that's the, that's the, that's a good point. And the point that I always make, and I usually equate it to, um, teenage pregnancy, right? Because a situation like this had happened where someone th thought they needed to start a social uh, nonprofit to address teenage pregnancy in their community because in their mind, they saw too many teenage girls being pregnant, 
But in the broader spectrum, once we did the feasibility study, uh, it was only a little tiny yeah, percentage. Not girl. Not too big, girl. <laughs> right? It was just a tiny, tiny percentage of the overall community. It wasn't big enough to be considered an issue, right? A real problem that needed to be solved. Um, so taking the time to really validate your idea, not because you think it needs to be solved, means that it's really a problem that needs to be solved. Also taking a look at the other organizations that are in and around your community and what they're doing. I like to tell people, you have to work in the gap, meaning that you need to assess the other organizations in and around your community, what they're doing and what they're not doing or can't do because they're at capacity, because no one organization can solve everyone's problems. That's why we need to develop partnerships and collaborations with other organizations. So if you work with, you can have the same general mission, but if your programs and services are geared towards filling the gaps that the other organizations cannot fill at this point in time, then you open yourself up for funding. Now, if you duplicate or mimic another organization, it cuts your funding ability. OK, mm -hmm. you'll be taking money from an organization um, if your grant application is stronger or they just feel the grantor feels like diversifying who they give monies to taking or uh, money from an organization that has been well established and doing good in the community to give to yours that probably doesn't even know what to do with the money. Right. Um, or not getting any monies at all because you don't have an established um, system and process and proof of concept when it comes to your programs and services. Mm -hmm. So those are things that you definitely want to think about when you're starting a nonprofit organization or social enterprise or be a social entrepreneur and making sure that you have, like I said, a mission, a business model that is aligned with your mission. They cannot conflict because if they conflict with each other, then you're not going to be able to have that pitch that is going to woe people. Right. I like to say your pitch, it should be hard strings to purse strings. So your pitch should pull at hard strings so people open their purse strings. So if you don't have that hard string story, that impact story, that's truly going to impact me right here. Right. You're not getting my money. You're my money. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. You're not going to get my money. You're not going to get anybody's money. So you want to make sure that's why it's so important to make sure that you're looking at working in the gap so that you are not um, planting too many flowers in the flower bed. Yep. Right? And, and then you're right? not getting any nutrients. So, because right. yeah. there's not enough space, right? If you, if right. you it up, there's not enough space for everybody to grow like mm -hmm. you're supposed to grow. And that's what you right. have to think about when you're when you're serving in the gap, you're looking at what they what they're missing and where you can fill a space. Or how you can complement each other. So if everybody's kind of in the trying to trying to fight in the same space, somebody's gonna go lacking, right? And it's probably gonna be you if you're the last one in the game. Right. You're the last one in. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um yeah, and just making sure that you consult with a consultant. I know a lot of people don't want to pay people, um, but it takes a lot more, uh, much more money to fix a problem that you did wrong the first time than it is to pay to get it done correctly the mm -hmm. first go around, right? Mm -hmm. So looking at the legalities of what you're, um, you're putting together, making sure that you have a business plan. I don't understand why people are constantly trying to start businesses without business plans, um, but that's the thing. Making sure that you have a business plan. Oh, and get a plan and don't use the plan. Like they get the plan. Right. And it's a form of document. It needs to be used. Making sure you have some type of strategic consulting um, done. You don't have to have the $25,000 consulting package, um, I mean, strategic planning session done, but you need to have some type of strategic planning so that you understand how you're going to get from point A to point L, then to point Z, right? Mm -hmm. Um and just making sure that you're filing all your reports and your paperwork. You know how many times we talk to nonprofit organizations who have had their designations we taken know. away from them time and time again because they started it, because they're not making any money, they didn't have the knowledge that they needed to still file their 990s at the end of every year. Send in that 990 and send in the, it's a postcard. Just send it in, 
right? But not being compliant, not um, being in compliant can cost you a lot of money. And mm-hmm. what, what is it that they say? Knowledge, lack of knowledge is not an excuse. It's so. no longer an excuse. <laughs> so, <laughs> y'all, know, y'all know too. But. Right. <laughs> So just be cognizant of those things when you're jumping into something. I find that a lot of people tend to get into nonprofit or social impact businesses without getting the base knowledge that they need. Yeah, they just they just jump in. I mean, right? you know, people like to do, you know, you won't go to the doctor. The doctor tells you, "Oh, I'm gonna need to take your kidney out," and you just be like, "Okay, doc." Okay, take it. Which one? Right. Okay. You're going to ask 20 million questions about mm-hmm. why this kidney needs to come out. What are the um? What's gonna happen if I lose the kidney? Blah 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 blah. And you're gonna go to Google and you're gonna Google all types of things. You're gonna spend hours researching it, trying to figure it out. And then you're probably gonna go get a second opinion. Mm-hmm. And then you're gonna ask everybody who you know who's a nurse or a doctor or a physician's assistant everything before you actually act. You need to take that same due diligence with your business ventures, mm-hmm. right? So. Yeah. And nobody does, you know, because we talked about yeah. this being hard work and this is your passion and people just kind of jump with that. Like, oh, I need to do this yeah. right now. And, and, and with no planning, no, no, you know, what are my other options? How else can I do this? I see, you know, a lot of people who try to start traditional nonprofits who shouldn't, right? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you could do this as a social enterprise, as a for-profit with, you know, with some, with some social, um, you know, intertwining, mm-hmm. or maybe you should just have an LLC because you're all about yourself, or, right. maybe, or maybe you just start a for-profit business and leave the whole social impact thing alone, period, right? But mm-hmm. people just don't process it because somebody said, well, if you want to get a donation, or if you want to get a contribution, then you need to, you need to, um, if you want people to, to give you a, you know, contribute to your business, you need to start a social enterprise. Um, and that's what people are thinking. Yes. So they'll just jump out and they'll start these things. And before they know what they're in over their heads, they don't know what to do. They can't figure out how to get it funded. And it leaves them back to, you know, again, not knowing which direction to take, you know, and it's, it's mm-hmm. we got to stop that and just, you know, think about before you jump in what to what you're supposed to be considering before you start right all right guys thank you for joining us today um this was part two of the series what is the name of the series um sling social issues for social impact businesses in the next um episode we're going to be talking about social entrepreneurship as a team i'm sorry as a tool for systematic change so until next time bye everyone